All right, now we're going to do a repair that I'm starting to see a lot of, which is the PlayStation 4 HDMI port. So this is like a charging port on an S3. Um, it's a standard little, you know, HDMI port that's metal, and it needs to get inside and replace the broken one on a PlayStation 4 board. Um, this is a great example of something that you should be doing if you're not doing, if you're doing general repair. Um, this is a port that gets a lot of plug and play mechanical damage, and it's a fairly simple replacement. Um, the challenge with this is that the, you know, uh, a gaming board is designed to take and experience a lot of heat. So this board has a huge thermal mass and um, we started seeing these coming in as botched repairs from other shops um, and and you can you can really struggle with this if you try and, um, and and do this without sufficient heat on the board so I'm going to show you my uh, strategy for this um, which is to really not try to clear out the old solder from the holes and I think that's what makes this a, a fairly straightforward repair so let's go ahead and get started like any any job that's a port uh, job, we want to check to make sure that, that we're likely actually dealing with a port problem. So let's look under the microscope at the HDMI port as it is. So that is clearly physical damage that's just mangled up. So yes, it is a good idea to go ahead and replace this port. So let's um, start by turning the board upside down and we're going to apply some chip quick to these joints starting at the bottom of the board let's find it in order to, to be successful with this port we're going to need to do what we can do to make the board require less heat since this board itself is a, just a giant heat sink so that's going to be um, reflowing the existing joints with chip quick, a low melt alloy, to make it easier to get the port out by requiring less heat. So I'm just going to cut off a piece of chip quick here and Start up my iron. So this is the standard FM2027 iron. And I think the tip is like BC1. It's a fairly wide chisel tip. All right, so you can see how much heat this board takes already just to kind of reflow that joint. Well, these ones are easier. It makes me wonder if there was a prior repair attempt on just that one side. Okay. Now I'm going to flip the board over. And we're going to kind of do the same thing on this top side of the board. These are all just the pins that are mashed in from the mechanical damage. So I'll add some flux. And I'm going to switch to a smaller iron to fit in this relatively tight space here. And I'm just sort of reflowing those joints from this side as well. Now I've played around with this. I've done a few of these and 
normally I try to remove chip quick when I use chip quick because itself is really just a removal alloy. It's not really meant for a, you know, kind of permanent, permanent install. Um, but in the case of this particular port, since the board requires so much heat, um, I found that you can make a really strong joint um, without trying to clear out those holes. So I'm doing the same thing. I'm just sort of reflowing the um, little pin pad junctions here. Okay, next I'm going to put some Captain tape over these small components that you can see um, in the area. I don't want any of those to blow away when I put hot air on this. So I'm just going to protect them so that they don't fly off. All right, now I'm going to fire up some hot air and I'm going to try to do this a little bit off the edge of the table. I'm going to have at the ready um, some, my, some of my pry tweezers, the kind of crappy tweezers. And some, you might even need like a bigger tool to, to get this off, so I'll have a pair of cutters nearby just in case. So I'm first going to uh, put some heat on the bottom of the board. So I'm using, uh, you know, some, some pretty significant heat here. And I'm just looking to see that flux start to, to melt. And bubble. All right, now I'm going to go ahead from the top of the board and aim right on this connector and see if I can get it off. Switch over to my cutters. These are my sort of dull cutters. And it's starting to come up, so now it's just sort of a mechanical lift. There we go. All right, so let's look and see what we have. All right, so what I've learned from messing around with a few of these is that I'm gonna just leave those holes filled. I'm not gonna attempt to remove the solder from the holes. If you do, then it gets to be um, really, really difficult because this, there's sort of you know lead-free solder in there with a little bit of a low melt alloy on the top and bottom. But it's hard to get the entire joint in that hole. It's a thick board. To get that entire joint reflowed is, um, 
really difficult. And so then you end up having um, uh, a hole that is sort of partially cleared with, uh, you know, like kind of solder on the edge. That's really difficult to deal with. And it's going to end up kind of malpositioning your, your new connector. So let's clean this up a little bit here. Just try to kind of make those even. Now on the pins, I'm going to use some braid and try to get that off and retin those with straight up leaded solder. And you can see just for, for an example, what would happen if I tried to clear this hole. You know, it's really difficult. I'd have to go over that lots and lots of times in order to try to clear that hole with braid or I'd need to get a solder sucker and I'd end up, you know, kind of beating up on the board more than I'd like to do. So I'm gonna just leave it filled. All right, now let's tin those pads. And, and you can see, like, do you notice the pattern of the ones that actually accept the tin pretty readily? They're the ones that are the not grounded ones. The grounded ones are part of this giant heat sink of a board. And they're just kind of difficult to work with. They just require a lot of heat. Okay, so those will be fine for the new connector. I'll clean it up with some alcohol. And then what we're gonna try to do is to just heat it up and press the new connector down into these joints. All right, let's make sure we get the new one and not the old one. Out with the old, in with the new. Okay, so I'm going to flux this again. start with some heat at the bottom of the board. And my hope is that this will be enough heat to allow me to seat this new connector. I'm just pressing it down into place. There we go. Hopefully that's not too far out of range. There we go. Now let me try to align it. The only thing you really want to avoid is you don't want to um, melt the inside plastic of the connector. There's too much heat. I don't think you guys can see that. like to move it over a little bit. That's 
Pretty good. Okay. I'm taking away the heat source and we'll let that cool for a second. All right. And now I'm going to go through and do the pin pad junctions and just kind of even those up a little bit. So I'll go back to my mini hot tweezers and standard 6337 leaded solder. So as I flow these, I'm going to um, kind of press them into alignment. So they are already soldered on pretty pretty well with just the bottom heat we did. But I'm going to just kind of go over them and try to align them. Let's see if we can get you a better view. See how these are already, they're already uh, soldered on so they don't have any movement. See that? So that is a intact joint, but I'm just going over them to make sure that um, I'm kind of nudging them to just sort of get them into a little bit better alignment. I'm pressing down on them to make sure they've got a good joint. All right, now I can go back through and make sure I don't have any bridging. So I want to look really close. And then just touch each joint. To make sure that I don't have any movement. Alright, that looks good. Now I'll go ahead and do the same thing with my, um, with the bottom side of my anchor joints. But this, you know, mechanically, this is super strong already. I'm going to look inside to make sure that I didn't melt the inside of the connector and that looks good. And then I'm just going to use a bigger iron and just kind of make sure that these anchors are good. Put some flex on there. Yep, so those are completely grabbing the um, bottom side of the porch. All right, so let's go here. All right, so this is a good looking joint. Test it, you know, plug it in, um, in HDMI, plug it in, pull it out. Even though there's still chip quick in these joints, because of the amount of solder in the thermal mass, this makes a really strong joint. You're not going to be able to flick this off even if you took a, a chisel. Um, it's totally, totally robust. So that is my, uh, my strategy for PlayStation 4 HDMI port. You know, if you had a whole stretch of these to do, um, you could, with practice, just get really good at it and, and turn this into a really straightforward repair. And, you know, you can apply this to any port, anything that has a mechanical port, you know, any device that has an HDMI port, you know, you can, um, you can, you can service those because those get that mechanical wear and tear, you know, uh, people, people plugging them in, you know, I think especially with the gaming systems, you know, those things inspire frustration, man, <laughs> people rip them out of the wall and then kind of regret that. So, um, this is a, a great repair to, to, uh, you know, help people uh, get their expensive systems 
um, fixed up without having to replace them. So that's it for this one.